Well, hey Team YouTube. Uh, I've been watching some really good videos lately and I thought I'd contribute to uh, the uh, collective uh, intelligence out there in YouTube land on building a uh, gaming rig with uh, starting with an OEM computer. A lot of people look to Dell and um, I personally have done so myself uh, also, uh, but this is a little different. This uh, particular machine I built almost exactly two years ago. It's a, it's a Lenovo Think Center. It's the M93 uh, series. And uh, we're just going to talk about what I did and what I experienced with this particular chassis and uh, you know what, what you might experience if you want to do a similar build. Uh, starting from the top, uh, I got this for about $185. And that was uh, with shipping uh, at the time, uh, back in about January 2018. And I felt like that was a really good deal. I'm sure people have gotten better. But uh, either way, it has an i5-4570. Uh, it had uh, 4 gigs of memory in it, uh, which, by the way, was the not the correct specification. We'll get to that later. Uh, a 500 gig hard drive and a copy of Windows 10 Pro. So the first question is, well, why did I go with Lenovo over Dell or HP? Uh, frankly, I liked the uh, layout of the case a little bit better, and as was explained to me on a video I watched recently about Dell, is they had different series, and they were uh, a little bit confusing to me. Uh, I'd also had some experience building some uh, old Dell, older uh, Lenovo Think Center uh, towers with an i5-2400 uh, many years ago uh, for my uh, child-aged gamers. So. Uh, let's go ahead and let's uh, take a look around here. Alright, so one of the things I really like about the uh, Lenovo is you have this push button side panel removal here and you just push the button and off it comes. Maybe that handle on the, some of the Dell cases is a little uh, smoother, uh, but I like that it feels a little cleaner uh, and that's just, uh, but either way that's what you get. So, as you can see, there's no gaming card in here right now. We're going to talk about that uh, in a minute. Uh, so, what did I do to turn this into my own personal productivity and gaming rig? So, uh, for starters, I uh, went with a solid state drive, and uh, it's just tucked up in here, just kind of sitting on top of the uh, optical drive. It's just a 250 gig uh, SATA 3. Uh, it's, a, it's a mushkin, and uh, I've had look, good luck with mushkin, not that mushkin rules the universe or anything, but I've had good luck with them. Also, you can look at it here, feast your eyes on that. That is one of the original uh, high-powered 80-plus units from about 2007 or 2008. This is before they'd even really decided on the 80-plus uh, markings for power supplies. But it's an old Cooler Master and uh, I've been building rigs. This is what, rig four or five, something like that with it. So it just keeps on going. It's it's pretty stout. <clears throat> and uh, let's see here. Also, to touch on the memory that I mentioned earlier, um, I had a back and forth with the refurbishing company and they said that, uh, well, if you don't like the memory that's in it, you'll have to return the entire computer and we'll trade it out for you. And I said, well, that's not, um, that's not, your terms are not acceptable. And uh, the price that I had gotten this for, it was, it was quite good. And I thought, well, I'll just keep it and I'll go ahead and upgrade the memory. So right in here, a couple of memory sticks, uh, two by uh, four gig. I haven't felt the need to go up to 16, let alone 32 yet. I would say that many of the games I play are maybe a little bit older. Uh, so that's that. Um, what I do like about this particular case is that it obviously accepts a standard ATX power supply. It has four, count them, four serial ATA ports, four memory slots, which again, if you wanted to bump up your memory, you wouldn't have to throw it away like you do in uh, you have two slots and you have to discard smaller memory modules. And uh, the Windows 10 install that came with this uh, was mostly bloat free. Very happy about that because I have gotten some uh, OEM rigs before computers and they were just filled with, uh, uh, with uh, things you didn't need. Uh, I, I'm looking at you wild tangent games. So 
Uh, let's move on to the what's not so good. All right, let me start the not so good section by saying what's the main criteria for bumping up a computer and turning it into a gaming capable machine. So, just doing a quick pan across here, there's the PCI Express X16 slot. So, what I liked about the pictures that I saw of the M93 online was that this big space up here, this particular slot here was where a lower steel hard drive caddy uh, slides in it can easily be removed. I think it maybe only had one screw in it. So you had this big long section where you could put graphics cards virtually of any length. I mean seriously this is the entire width of the case. And then of course back here you obviously have uh, room for a double height uh, solution. The serial ATA cables uh, right there if you use a 90 degree type uh, clear the graphics card without issues. The only challenge with this case is the USB 3.0 header right there. And the uh, cable that gets removed is, uh, looks like this. It's, uh, there's the header side. And uh, on the other side, you have the two USB uh, headers for the front panel. Um, what I did do was I took and uh, bought a a Rosewill 3.5 drive bay USB 3.0 header and I took those cables out of it and then I ran you can see it right here and then I so here is the the, the header so it's a, a standard cable now to the front uh, panel and so I got my USB 3.0 back uh, so to speak and um, the other thing that I did was that I purchased a 3.0 uh, riser card, PCI Express. Need a little Molex power there, and then here's your USB 3.0 header. Let's just uh, just go ahead and drop that bad boy in real quick. Let's see here. Another thing I do like is this has the uh, case uh, catch here. You just go like that, and you're able to. Uh, open it up and then install cards. So no screws required. It would help if I orient it the right way. So now take this and I have my USB 3.0 back. So that was about this whole setup between the card and the uh, the header uh, cables it was about thirty-five dollars. So, yeah, it's a price to pay. You add it to the cost of the rig. It's you know, like I say, unfortunate that that 3.0 header is in the way of the card, but a relatively small price to pay for pretty much being able to install any card you want. Okay, Team YouTube. I just consider this, this is a GTX 760, but consider this a placeholder for just about any single uh, uh, graphics card solution that you can think of, and it'll likely fit in this case without issues whatsoever. One time I had an old uh, HD uh, 5870 from a Dell Pavilion, and that thing was m a monster. I think it would fit in this case with uh, out any issues. So, and I'm talking about physically a monster. Now that car is, you know, pretty plain by some of the things that are on the market these days. So, but there is the open spot just waiting for a graphics card. And again, those 90 degree uh, SATA connectors, those, help, those will, help, will clear just fine with this graphics card. So, let's see if we can go ahead and bolt that sucker in. And through the magic of video, here we go. Tried to do this once with just one hand, realized that that was kind of bad. There we are. Now, there is one other thing that I do not care for, and it's been the standard on most uh, motherboards, even enthusiast ones, for years. And that is the little um, PCI Express uh, locking tab right there. It's just a kind of a... a form-closed, spring-loaded lock just made out of a piece of 
piece of plastic. When I say spring load, the plastic is the spring. I've noticed on more recent motherboards that uh, people are moving to more of a sliding closure. Uh, like, for example, you can look at my J3455M video. It has one of those on the PCI Express slot. Very handy, very nice. I uh, wish they'd have come out with that years ago because uh, the way I've normally uh, attacked that problem is I have a pair of uh, angled hobbyist pliers and I would literally reach down and just push on that uh, lock to release it. And that was never fun thinking of how many hundreds of dollars I had to mess up if I slipped with the tool. Another price of entry for doing an OEM chassis build to gaming rig is uh, that you need to get an adapter cable generally. I think it was probably Intel uh, second or third generation where they stopped making motherboards with 24 pin uh, connectors on them and you had to get some sort of adapter. Of course this is an i5-4570 so it's fourth gen. So let's just go ahead and plug this in. I found this cable on eBay for about $12 and it's one of those things that, uh, gee, maybe I'm locked into the uh, Lenovo infrastructure now because I have this particular cable. Here we go. Lock that up. And uh, what I like about that cable that I found on, uh, I, excuse me, on Prime uh, is where I got it, is it has the same kind of this mesh sleeving like the power supply did. I tell you, for a power supply, that was literally manufactured back over 10 years ago. This thing really did everything right. So, uh, let's move on. Okay, so Team YouTube, one of the things that also happened when I received this chassis was that right here on the case, the steel right here on the, the dividers between the slots where the, where the brackets go, you know, otherwise, uh, it was kind of pushed in, and I thought the packaging job could have been a little better I don't remember if I ducted any uh, thing from the from the score on eBay, but it made this uh, locking latch not work correctly. But I do really like this uh, locking latch, and it holds. Let me see if I can do this here. It holds everything in, you know, very securely. Oh, by the way, when we were off camera, I uh, I did connect the Molex 4-pin power cable back up to that PCI Express to USB 3.0 adapter card. Uh, the magic of film. So let's talk about, uh, let's see, I think we got everything here pushed together. Let's just go ahead and hook up the graphics card power supply. Check out these old cooler masters. You get two 6-pin uh, two and two 8-pin. Uh, it is just a beefy old power supply so and it even has these uh, ferrite chokes on them and I think that is a, a feature of your don't even know if people do a lot anymore on the other hand I've not been shopping for high wattage power supplies uh, either so there we go I'm just gonna imagine a GTX 1080 or better in there and maybe that'll come true someday by the way one thing I did forget to mention is that the OEM hard drive that came with the system it essentially is now uh, just a platter drive for storage for Steam games and media and whatnot. I even have a uh, yet another uh, platter drive in here. I think it's 800 gig or something. So you know, over a over a terabyte of storage makes it pretty nice. Working on uh, video projects and games and that sort of business. I would say I'm not an expert in any of that and don't use the newest stuff and I certainly don't have professional level video editing but uh, yeah, I do my best. Alright team, let's put the case lid back on here. Very nice little click. So Lenovo M93 now upgraded to play not the latest games but you could if you wanted to. So over the last, like I say, a couple of years, it feels like there's been an explosion of videos taking a, an OEM chassis, you know, HP or Dell or Lenovo, and this one, of course, is a Lenovo Think Center, and uh, talking about how to turn it into a capable or even a very capable uh, gaming rig. And I just wanted to go through just my take on that whole thing. And the idea is, and this is, why would you use an OEM system? Well, let's just break it down. 
when you upgrade, when you want a faster system, and we'll just talk, put gaming aside for a minute, you want three things to be upgraded. The motherboard, generally because you need to support a faster CPU, which would be the second thing, and then the third thing is memory. And uh, probably some people can't remember back in the day when we went from SD RAM to DDR to DDR2 in the span of, I don't know, what was it, six or seven years? Well, DDR3 stuck with us for the better part of, what, eight, nine years? All by itself, it kept getting faster. Uh, a good example is I bought a uh, Nahalem system back, I think it was 2011, and the same XMS memory clocked to 1600 megahertz. Uh, these, this system here, this, this one here, is the same 1600 megahertz. Now it's not the same memory, but we went for a long span without having uh, the move up to DDR4. So, um, my opinion about the motherboard, CPU, and memory market, though, it's driven by new, not used components. Let's say I want to go and upgrade my custom gaming tower, and I want to buy a used motherboard, used memory, used processor. You can do that, but generally those things don't have very good warranties. Uh, because they're, you know, the best stuff is usually from a private seller if you're looking for an Asus or a Gigabyte uh, motherboard. You may be able to find a CPU with a 90-day warranty, but uh, I think a, a one-year warranty is almost unheard of. Um, but these chassis, and especially I did look for a uh, Microsoft certified refurbisher online, they come with warranty. Now the way to exercise that warranty, unfortunately, is you have to send the whole thing back. Uh, but the nice thing about when you do an OEM chassis that's a used computer is generally it's been lightly used for office work, and any of the uh, computers that have uh, defects that are kind of latent defects, those burn out in service early on, leaving the good ones behind. Plus, when you do buy an OEM chassis, you not, don't just get the motherboard and the CPU and the memory, you get a Windows key and a case and an optical drive and a, and a keyboard and mouse sometimes gets uh, thrown in. And all of that, that whole system can be cheaper than going into the parts bin and buying a motherboard and a CPU and some memory sticks uh, separately. So, like I say, I could have exercised this warranty on this particular machine, um, so that was kind of onerous to send the whole thing back. Uh, I opted not to, and I did buy some new memory, and it did raise the price, but even with the purchases of the, uh, the header cables, the USB 3.0 card, and that sort of thing, I still feel like I was on par with other more complete system and I got to specify it myself. Uh, the other thing I did was that I, until the warranty period was up, I held on to the original hard drive with the original Windows install on it and I just hid it in the bottom of the case and just waited until the year warranty was up and then it turned into that uh, data drive. And that way I could literally unbolt everything I had put in sent it back to the, man, the, the refurbisher, and I would have exercised my warranty that way. So I hope you found this helpful, YouTube, and enjoy your gaming experiences and enjoy your computer building experiences. Have a great night.